This uh, monitor right here, that's a camera inside the dome. So we actually have a full-size edge in, inside the dome. It is facing us, and then the virtual world is projected on the inside wall of the dome, okay? And so Rads is uh, the operator. He's gonna be at the control and uh, get the motion system up and running, and then set the simulator up to do some of the different demonstrations. And uh, my name is Mike Blommer. I manage the facility here, and I'll tell you a little bit about Vertex and what we use it for. And after Rias goes for her drive, we'll all go inside of the dome so you can see what the simulator looks like. And if there's still time remaining, we'll come back out here. And uh, if I'm correct, you, you guys have just heard about uh, some of the technology on the Fusion, right, with the lane. So I can show you, we had done a drowsy driver study a number of years ago and show you some of the results from uh, one participant to very sneaky. Um, so it's pretty interesting. So a little bit overview of Vertex. Vertex stands for Virtual Test Track Experiment. It is a large motion-based simulator, which you will see in just a moment. It's, the dome sits on these six hydraulic actuators. We have about 12 feet of motion side to side, front to back, about six feet up and down, and then it also does the roll, pitch, and yaw. Uh, so a lot of motion. It's, uh, we claim it's the most advanced in the uh, automotive industry in North America. There is another simulator in North America that has a little bit more motion. It's actually situated uh, a little bit more like the, the picture here, and that's at the University of Iowa. Ooh. So yes, the dome is coming forward. That gives Rita the sensation she's actually accelerating, right? So it's actually moving forward. It's pitching up a little bit, and uh, that gives her the sense that she's accelerating the vehicle. And I'll just orient you real quick to some of the monitors. These three monitors that are up here, those are blended together inside the dome to be a continuous view of her front forward driving scene. So she's looking straight down the road. She is in control. Uh, the two monitors over here is what Rita would see if she looked in her driver or passenger side. <coughs> so those are looking back behind her. And then again, some of the monitors here again, forward front driving. This is, uh, there's a TV right behind uh, the second row in the edge, so Rita's looks in the center rear view mirror, and she's requesting this image. Okay, we obviously have a number of cameras inside of the vehicle to see what the driver's doing. Uh, if you also look behind you, there's a number of uh, videos that are replicated. So when we do our studies, we record not only the video that you see there, but all kinds of numerical data. Um, the steering one angle is a function of time, what that dome is doing, where the vehicle is uh, in its lane, uh, everything so we can recreate the simulated environment. Okay, so Rita's is doing some lane changes right now, just going back and forth, just to give you a sense of what the simulator can do in terms of motion. <coughs> now inside the dome, it's gonna feel just like, it should feel just like driving a car. So although it sounds cool to be in the motion driving simulator, eh, yeah, she's changing lanes, whatever. I think it's actually much cooler to be out here watching a big 20, uh, 22 foot diameter dome uh, going side to side. You don't see that every day. Um, so what types of studies and what do we use this simulator for? We look at active safety technologies, driver assistive technologies in the research uh, frame of development within Ford. So things that are we're looking at new technologies, we want to study them in a driving environment, see if it's something that we want to pursue developing and investigating. Um, technologies that are looking at helping to mitigate driver distraction, again, drowsy driver, uh, alerting systems, alerts for things like lane departure warnings or forward collision warnings. So you just heard an audio uh, cue that was a lane departure warning, an audio one. So Rita's is departing her lane, she's getting a warning. What we'll do is we'll bring different drivers in and they may experience uh, an audio alert, another driver might come in and experience a vibration or a haptic cue, another person may come in and experience a visual cue, or some combination of those. So for things like forward collision where a driver is going to suddenly, you know, there might be a vehicle that suddenly stopped in front of you and we give you an alert, we don't then have you drive again with a different type of alert to see what your response is because once we've surprised you that first time, people are pretty vigilant and they're ready to go on that second time. 
Um, we are going to surprise Redis with a forward collision event. She's done this thousands of times, so she won't truly be surprised. But you at least get a sense for what the, the scenario is that we're, we're testing. So um, one thing that uh, we're going to do the distraction. All right, so we're going to do we're going to change things around here a little bit. Um, so what Redis is, what's going to happen is there's going to be a bus that uh, you can actually see it here, a big white bus. It's going to pass Redis. It's going to get a certain distance out in front of her. She's going to be asked to read some numbers. And while she's looking away from the road, that vehicle is going to instantaneously jump into her lane. It's going to decelerate, and uh, she will get a forward collision warning. What I want you to do is to listen for a sound. And then if you watch this monitor here, you'll see some red flashing. In, in the cluster that she sees. Right, so she wakes up, she's alerted, she hits the brakes, appropriate response, and prevents a crash, right? So just a little bit of a demonstration. So let me kind of cover a couple of things. Um, so what's gonna happen is Rad is gonna shut the motion system down. You're gonna hear a loud noise with the hydraulics releasing the pressure, so don't worry about that. But what we'll do, right, is what Redis was doing is she was looking at a monitor that was up in the center stack here. It was flashing the same numbers that we saw out here. Now, when we normally do this study, um, we'll bring that monitor a little bit closer down to the shifter so people are really getting their eyes off the road. And it's not because Ford's looking at putting uh, some type of device there on the Ford vehicles. But instead, that is what people do uh, occasionally throughout their drive, right? They look away from the road. The duration of that number reading task was three seconds. That's kind of the critical duration of looking away from the road when things can happen out there. Um, and uh, we flash six numbers over those three seconds, so they're flashing at you at a half a second. We're just asking the drivers to read those numbers so they come at you fairly fast. Um, so it keeps your eyes on that display, and then most of the time when we're conducting this type of study, most of the time nothing happens. We just read the numbers and we continue on. Then the last event, unbeknownst to the driver, you get a forward collision and one of the different types of alerts. And then we can go back to the America data. We are really focused on the quantitative and objective data. We can look at driver's response. How quickly did they get onto the brakes or start steering after they received an alert? So then we have data from all kinds of drivers, right? And we can do some statistical analysis then to find out which alert was most appropriate to re-engage the driver into the driving environment. So this is just one example, right, of an active safety technology that we've looked at. But again, looking at driver assistive technologies to re-engage the driver when they need really be focused on the driving environment. Okay, um, so what I'd like to do now is we have some a little bit of time. Um, the bridge is rising back up. We'll go inside of the dome. We can leave uh, bags or whatever here if you want. You can bring your camera, video recording equipment inside of the dome. We'll spend some time in there. We'll come back out. Um, before we walk in, just a couple of things. I uh, ask that you not touch the walls of the dome because the walls are what project the virtual world and tend to leave fingerprints and then we have to scrub them off afterwards. Um, <laughs> the other thing, and it's nothing, just more of, it's actually more of interest. When you get in there, if you start talking, your voice is going to bounce off the walls and it sounds really weird. Okay, so it, uh, it might sound like your voice is suddenly coming from behind you or somebody talking right in front of you, their voice is off the side, all that kind of stuff. So uh, just a heads up on that. Um, a couple other just uh, pieces of information. So Vertex began operation in 2001. So we're in the uh, 12th year. And uh, we just uh, recently upgraded last year our visual system. So once you get inside there, you'll see that we have some nice uh, high resolution LCOS projectors, which is very similar to an LCD technology. But we rely on home theater uh, gaming and flight simulation technology to help allow us to do this type of simulation. You know, to get video, everybody has uh, been buying, you know, the video games, so now we can just get a high-end video card to do the graphics that are here, whereas before, you know, you used to have, to have a computer, huge computer, just to do one of these monitors. Now we can just get a high-performing uh, PC or something to do that. Uh, the home theater, everybody's buying their big uh, flat panel uh, T 
TVs and whatnot that really drives the cost of doing the digital projection technology down so that we can use that type of technology here. That being said, we can't just go to our local store and buy a projector off the shelf because it does need to survive all the vibration that's up in the top of the dome, but uh, nonetheless, it allows us to get more and more realistic and uh, get the drivers fully immersed into the driving environment. Okay, so with that, let's go ahead and head inside. Here we go. Woohoo. Come around. We try to get everybody in here, get some people going around to the front. And we're just going to get around. If you want to sit in the driver's seat, feel free to do so. Let's do it. Oh, wow, the salt is amazing. All this curve back in, but on towards the So floor. look at this. Just be careful walking that you don't bump into the wall. And, uh, Interesting, have a little in. iPad in here, and you see here. all these, so a little bit about the all these so speakers. This was a drivable edge. Tons of cameras. Uh, in life. When we, there you uh, go. It, we, uh, There's a microphone here, here. And, and there are more cameras here. And, then and look at this on the back. Interesting. Very cool. Now, when the when the vehicle is stationary, the simulator is stationary, we do not provide any torque on the steering wheel here. But once the driver does start driving, we do provide torque to give you that feedback like you're connected to the road. It vibrates to give you the sensation of road vibration and, uh, and, and gives you the sense that you're driving. Look at this huge projectors here. We do 3D sound, so we play the appropriate wind, road, engine noise. Uh, we also include the 3D effects of things like Doppler effects. So the driver is passing the vehicle or a vehicle is passing the driver. You get the whoosh sound, the Doppler effect as, as, as the two vehicles pass each other. Bye.